Amen. Never gets old reading the Word of God, pulling truths out maybe you've not seen before. I, that's what I'm always asking for. Luke chapter 17, we read, As he entered Christ into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. There is what I have always called a fellowship of pain. In other words, whatever pain that you've gone through or are going through in life, you often get connected with other people that are going through the same pain as you. I've often described it as two pregnant women finding each other at Walmart. <laughs> they, they understand each other. People have gone through cancer or diabetes or the loss of a loved one. They, they have a, the same pain. They feel it. It's tough when you tell somebody, I know how you feel, when you really don't know how they feel until you have been in their shoes. Ten lepers. Lepers, in order to be excommunicated from or removed from a village, they would stay in a pod together, if you would, and become their own tribe. They would go to a priest, and a priest would observe them and look at them and see the white sores that are forming on their bodies, the, the uh, psoriasis that has gone into a... Uh, literally uh, uh, the expansion of, of taking away the fingers and the toes, the nose, the ears, the outer appendages working their way in, the, the, the grossness of it, and the fear that it would get on somebody else. So they would go and hang out, and no matter if they, wherever they were from, they all became a community together. So here we have found 10 men who have leprosy that are part of a fellowship of pain. And listen to me, there is also a fellowship of joy. Whenever you've had a great thing happen in your life, you want to go share it with somebody else. Amen. Amen. As Mary went running to Elizabeth saying, hot dog, I'm pregnant. Amen. Elizabeth's baby jumped inside her. That's also a fellowship of joy. Can I get an amen? Amen. So don't forget that. It ain't always on the negative side. It's on, we'll, we'll deal with that later on. We stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he spoke to them, and he said, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God. He fell on his face at his feet and he gave him thanks. See, that's what appreciation sounds like. Amen. Amen. It shouts out. It, it expresses itself. It, it can't be quiet. It, it has a spirit of anticipation as they went. And you, you have to imagine, please with me, as they walked away, all of a sudden they, their noses began to grow, their fingers came back. Things began to happen in their life. And as they were moving, they were being healed. It was happening as they were going back to the priest. And as they were moving in that direction, one turned around. He couldn't stop. I don't know if he tried to nudge his friends or if he looked and saw their noses and ears coming back. But either way, he turned back around and he went back to Christ and he fell down on his face. He gave him thanks. He expressed himself. And the Bible says he was a Samaritan. Let me mention to you, I believe that there are some cultures that are more thankful than others. If you've ever been oppressed, put down, and I'm not talking about red, yellow, black, white. I'm talking about from an area you're from, you were brought up in the Appalachian or on a poor side of Houston or something of that nature, and all of a sudden you didn't have for a while, and all of a sudden you got, and when you got it, you begin to shout it out. Amen? I told uh, somebody a while ago, it's, it's one thing to go from, you know, as you uh, move through life, it's a great thing, but it's hard to go from steak back to beans. <laughs> amen. We may be heading there. we got to stay thankful. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 But he's thankful. He's a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Well, mm, I know a little bit about math. Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Well, what a statement. That he said, he spoke. Were there, were there not found that would return to give glory to God except this one? And he said unto him, Rise. Go thy way, your faith has made you whole. Father, thank you for the word of God. I already preached it. I've already feel it in my spirit. Lord, to be thankful in all circumstances. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for your healing and your power. In Jesus' name, everyone shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. Thankfulness always opens doors. 
Amen. While, while ungratefulness will close doors, thankfulness is attractive. Even Jesus gave thanks on a regular base, basis. He would say, God, I thank you. Father, I thank you that I know you heard me. Amen. So he was constantly, here's the one who came from the heaven's thrones, who lived uh, on the street of gold, amen, in the greatness of heaven. And yet he would speak back to his father and say, I want to thank you because I know you heard me. When you pray, you need to believe that God hears you. Can I get amen? Amen. amen. Thankfulness is a powerful thing. Amen. A thankful heart produces God's wholeness. Wholeness is not just an outward thing. Thy faith, he said to him, has made you whole. Every believer's goal in life is to be like Christ. If you don't realize this, this is why God calls you to be born again, so that you would be like Jesus. Just won't be like Jesus. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. To be predestinated to be conformed. How many of you realize, don't lift your hand, but realize just how far short we fall to being like Jesus? Amen. Mm. I meet folk all the time think they look like Jesus, act like Jesus. I just want to slap them yep. and watch their reaction. Yep. Because he didn't speak back. Amen. They beat him and he didn't fight back. As a matter of fact, the scripture teaches us, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but it's Christ that lives within me. Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. When you're crucified with him, you understand that you ain't always got to bark back. You ain't always got to say, I mentioned in the second service last week, you think something before you say it. I get tired of hearing people say, well, I thought it, I'm going to say it. You're an idiot. That's right. <laughs> Amen. God gave you the ability to think of something before you release it from your lips. You ain't always got to say it. Because when you say it, amen, you can't get it back. You wouldn't know how many times it, it just pulled in, I wanted to say things. And I know I have one friend of mine that comes to church. He said, the only reason I come is just to see what you're going to say next. Because <laughs> I know you'll say things that other preachers may not say, but there are things I will hold back. Amen. I realize it's not the right place for me to do it. Religious people are hard to take. They, they bother me. Amen. They're concerned with just keeping the law. Yeah, Jesus named baptism. They play dress up to come to church. He had nine lepers. They were cleansed, but only one was made whole. Verse 19 said, he said unto him, arise, go your way. Your faith, amen, what you believe, how you believe, amen, everything about your believing has made you whole. Wholeness is a powerful thing. When I talk to people about marriage, when I talk to people about uh, relationships, when I talk to people about life in general, I will often tell them, you've got to become whole first before you connect with somebody else. Wholeness, is, when you're on an airplane and this starts going down, the students will tell you, put the oxygen on yourself first before you take care of your family. Oftentimes, we want to take care of others, but our life's a mess and a wreck. You've got to get whole. So when you speak of wholeness, wholeness has to do with four basic things. Security, acceptance, purpose, and identity. Security, acceptance, purpose, and identity. Security is know that you're taken care of. When Jesus told this leper, you're whole by faith. He's telling him, you've been taken care of. You're, you're secure toward heaven. You're going to make heaven. I don't have to go to bed at night wondering if I'm going to get into heaven. If something happened to me, if I died in a, in a wreck or anything else. That's security. Acceptance is to know that you are loved. It's a powerful feeling to know that God loves you. Amen. If nobody else feels love toward you, you need to know God loves you. But acceptance is a part of life. I accept you. You accept me. Amen. Mercy does that, and it gives you value. Everybody say value. value. Everybody should feel value. Amen. <laughs> value is what, what you want to make people feel when you're around them because of the Jesus in you. Amen. He made you valuable. Next is purpose. Why you exist. We spend a lot of time on purpose. Everybody here was born with a purpose. When you find your purpose, serve it to the world. Amen. The world is looking for your purpose. Amen. What God put in say, you got your nose hairs have a purpose, your ears hair have a purpose. Your ears hairs. That don't even sound right, does it? Until you get as old as Ed and back there, then it does. But purpose, identity, to know who you are and whose you are. But now I heard that song, uh, Who the Sun Sets Free is Free as Thee. Uh, I, I am a child of God. Amen. You, you belong to the Father. When you, when you walk in that, you understand that. Amen. Even devils run from you, my friend. They're afraid when you got up in the morning. Faith brings forth thankfulness that results in works. When he, got, when he got healed, he had to do something. He had to turn around. He had to go back. There's something about uh, some folk that move through life and there's no works in their life. Amen. Works is a part. It's serving. Works is serving. 
It's just serving one another. Amen. And we've always had a church that serves. We've always had a church that, that wants to do something for somebody else, even the, uh, the misfortunate. We want to do that. James 2.18 says, I'll show you my, my, your faith by my works. The grateful leper came back, amen, and thanked him. Thank God. Religion will acknowledge God, amen, but they, they have no character of it. There's a connection between thankfulness and wholeness. A thankful heart promotes God's wellness. Amen. Go show yourself to the priest. Now, let me mention this. When Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest, it's an indicator that the man had already seen a priest. A priest had already looked at him and pronounced him unclean. So then he had to go out. Let me throw and flip a coin here real quick. Oftentimes we think Jesus was someone who did not like the religious or the, the, the priest. Or the priest at that time walked under a revelation or an understanding that was limited. Yeah. When I got born again, I had a limited understanding of the word of God. I didn't understand that I could be uh, uh, healed. I didn't understand uh, baptisms. I didn't understand the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand uh, words of knowledge. I didn't understand, amen, me calling you brother and you calling me brother, and we ain't got the same mama. I'm serious. I didn't understand all that, brother. Said, I sure didn't know how to uh, sing it with a hymnal. Y'all's hymnals really messed me up when I got born again. Amen. Y'all started in the first line, and then y'all skipped to the fourth one. That's right. Amen. Got a guy up here waving his arm. I ain't got no, I didn't pick band in school. I played football. Hello. <laughs> Amen. So I didn't understand what was going on. So the priest then walked in a limited revelation and understanding. <laughs> so when Jesus looked at the man who had leprosy that came back, who was now whole, everything about him was good, he told him, go show yourself to the priest. Now, can you imagine when he did that? What he was doing was he was testifying to the priest. He was letting the priest know God's son is walking on the earth with all power. Amen. When I say something, it's going to happen. So when that man walked back into that, knocked on that church door, walked in there, looked at that priest, he was encouraging the priest. I thank God that God encourages us preachers even when we don't have understanding of the why and we, what we do. Yeah. Amen. But he walked back in the building. There had to be that moment when that priest goes, what? Right. What? Amen. I have had that moment in my life. Amen. When I've seen like Pat up here on the stage, when I, when I realized that, that there's no way. What? Dennis. Den what Dennis? Mount? And sitting in the back. I watched Dennis go through something and I, we thought we were going to lose it. What? Amen. It's like I don't always understand why on this side some get healed and some don't. But I got to give God thanks that I'm going to see those on the other side. So I have to keep my faith alive. I got to keep my joy alive. Because listen, there are people on this earth that still needs me. Amen. So I can't just fall back into any kind of bitterness or, or hurt or things and let things swallow me up. So when he goes to the priest, he shows himself. Now, I do not know if all the other nine went to see the priest. I'll say something else to you. It looks like there were ten that left. Nine were healed, but one was healed and made whole. Right. Yeah. I want to be healed and whole. I want to know that I'm secure, that I'm going to heaven. I have a purpose here on this earth. Amen. That the things that God has created in me, for me is, uh, is there. I have an identity. I am his child. I am accepted. Amen. I don't have to wonder if God loves me tomorrow when I get, to, when I get up. There's a wholeness about that. And when you walk in wholeness, you walk in victory. Amen. You walk with your head up just a little bit higher. You're healed, but you're thankful that you were healed. I, I love the fact the scripture says to those that have been born again, that love much because they've been forgiven much. Until you recognize how much God has forgiven you. Did you know he even told the guy who was a paralytic that was lowered down through the roof, son, your sins be forgiven? And you have to ask yourself, what sins did a guy do who can't walk anymore? It's the sin of envy. The sin of jealousy. The sin of seeing what somebody else has got in their life and you ain't got. Right. Amen. We all do that when we compare Comparison demoralizes. Boy, the preacher preaching good today. Amen. Comparison demoralizes. You got to quit comparing yourself to others. You got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I know it ain't much, but this is all I got to work with. Amen. amen. I'm going to work with what I got. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. See, the scripture says he had leprosy. Leprosy. Go show yourself. It's impossible. It's in, impossible to be hateful when you're grateful. It's impossible to be hateful when you're grateful. As long as I'm grateful... Hate stays away from me. I just got to stay grateful. Amen. Leprosy is, is being sicker than you want to be. 
Leprosy was a type of sin. In Leviticus chapter 14, and I'm just going to walk through this real fast. But the whole issue that I know that this young man had been to the priest is telling me out of Leviticus 14 that first you'd have to go show yourself to the priest. Leprosy is the loss of feeling. It, it, will, it will numb you. Amen. You go numb. Uh, then, you, then you become dumb. Amen. To your senses. Damage to the body is caused by the neglect due to the absence of pain. You can't feel it. And because when you, don't, when you lose the feeling, then, then sores can take place. You get burnt without knowing you're being burnt. Pain is an indicator that something is wrong. It needs adjusting or correcting. Pain is not a bad thing. Right. Pain is an indicator. And when, when I have a heartache, it's an indicator. When my head hurts, it's an indicator. Uh, my dog got sick last week. I was watching him, and I could tell he was in pain. Amen. Now, he can't talk to me. That's why I love my vets so much. I think they're smarter than doctors. I really, really do. Amen. I, I go to the vet and get stuff before I go to the doctor. They just... <laughs> See? I didn't say it. But it's so important to understand yeah, that dog's in pain, so I got to start doing things to help him through his pain. Amen. Pain's an indicator that something is wrong. So there was a cleansing that took place in his life. They're brought to the priest. The priest meets them outside the camp. Actually, the, the priest would take two clean birds. Amen. One bird is killed in an earthen vessel over running water. The second bird, along with the scarlet cloth. This is the process they went through. The cedar wood, the hyssop branch. It, it's a lot of stuff that happens here. But either way, the priest looks at him and pronounces him clean now. So now he gets to go on with his life. How is that important? He gets to go back into society. He gets to go back to his family. He gets to have fellowship again. It removes the loneliness from his life. When, before you got born again, can I mention to you that leprosy owned you. Amen. You were numb to pain. You did things that were dumb. Amen. It, it affected you. But when you get to know Christ, it puts sensitivity back in you. You showed yourself to the high priest. Amen. Christ himself. And he makes you clean and he pronounces you. And what he does, he gives you a family. You know what I sat with on Thursday? Family. Amen. Family was coming through the door. And when I, when I looked, there was family. There was family serving one another. There was family playing. There was family. I found out I had children everywhere. <laughs> Amen. Grandkids everywhere calling me Paw Paw. Hallelujah. I was giving out money. <laughs> just, just loving the kids. Thanking God for every opportunity. Amen. To be with my family. I don't know about this, but the scripture says when he came back, he was healed. He turned back. And with a loud voice. He glorified God. Now, I have no problem getting loud. I was loud last night. I'm going to be loud today. I'll be loud tomorrow. Amen. And nothing wrong. It's, I just like to be loud. I, I have the ability to get loud. Some folks struggle with getting loud. A little bit. It's outside their comfort zone just a little. But I promise you, when you get healed, you get loud. Amen. When God touches your life, turns things around, you get loud. I don't know if, but maybe the leper knew a little bit about Scripture. Maybe he knew a little bit about Psalm 100 that says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. And that's what the leper did. He came before the presence of God. I wonder if it's when I'm just hearing his voice. When, when the voice of Christ, when they, when all ten yell, have mercy on us. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. And they heard that calming, effective voice of authority. And they walked away. And as one was healed, he turned back around. And he came back and he gave thanks. And he could hear his voice again. Once you hear his voice, your life is never the same again. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. He has made us and not we ourselves. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures through all generations. Thankful in every circumstance, my friend. Giving thanks is not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. It's not an option. Amen. Giving thanks, my friend, is a commandment. God commands us to give. Now, I don't say, I don't want, don't tell me what to do. Okay. Don't go show yourself to the priest. Don't be healed. Run around the rest of your life called nothing. Right. Amen. Just be that way if you want to. But I want to tell you, healing comes on the other side of praise. 
Amen. Healing comes on the other side of appreciation. Healing comes on the other side of being thankful. Amen. Amen. So here they go. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Ephesians 5.20. Give it thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm starting to close here, Joseph. Amen. The scripture says, you know, for us to give thanks. Giving thanks starts with a decision and ends with an action. When we have opportunity, that's why worship was, I come in running this morning when I heard that song. Man, I just, I just wanted to be a part of what was going on up here in worship. How that uh, is inspiring to me. It's inspiring the worship is. Count your blessing. You know, there's an old song. Some of you were brought up in church. I weren't. But there's an old, that's it. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. You know, we count many things, don't we? I mean, we were about 150 in the folk feeding. And I said, Judy, how do you know we're 150? She said, I put out 100. There's 150 dinner rolls out there. And we just went through the last one. Amen. We count them. We counted people that got plates. And then she come out. She said, give me a minute. I got more in the oven. Amen. We brought more out. We count. Don't we? Oh, you shoot a buck? I've never seen anybody shoot a buck and say, well, how, 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 many, how, how many points? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I, 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 I didn't count it. I didn't count it. I just shot it. You know, it just looked big. It was way out there, you know. It's somewhere around here, you know, and, and it's, it's spikes everywhere. Ah, it's too lazy to count it. Folk don't do that. They don't do that at all. Amen. They don't count. Like they, they count them. I, I, I take pictures on my camera when I say, I count them. Amen. I actually had a teenager last week tell me, uh, she said, Pastor, would, would you get, can I have some deer meat? I said, sure. I said, I got a little four, a little, a cold four point. I got, I got some deer meat. She, she said, I don't want no four point meat. I want eight point meat. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story right now. She wanted eight point meat, not four point meat. Now, I really don't know where the eight point meat is in there compared to the four point meat. Amen. I don't know if it tastes any better than the no point meat. <laughs> got to get an amen? Yeah. Amen. But you got to count. We count many things. We count our money. We count our kids. We count plates at the table. And each time, we have to stop looking. We've got to focus. When you count your blessings, sometimes I think it's a, particularly right now, it's a good time to sit back and count all the blessings you've got in your life. Amen. amen. To walk through them. Name them. Thank them. Where did I get that blessing from? I try to remember the people that gave me stuff. I tried to, because I remember my blessings in my life. Now, the issue that is, I'm adding my blessing because, my goodness, you know about the subtractions. Yeah. You know how they take place. There's always a subtraction. There's always something going on. But I got to add my blessing in. Thankfulness and circumstances. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. You know, if you have a poor self-image, if you struggle to love God, you have to learn how to accept God's design. This is how he designed you. Mm. People who suffer tragedy, all things work together. People who've had great disappointment in God, in everything, give thanks. I've always liked this story that on May the 2nd, 1863, a seemingly invincible Confederate army won a tremendous victory at Chancellor Surville. This victory was offset by the setback of General Stonewall Jackson, who lost his left arm. The next day, when visited by Chaplain Lacey, Jackson remarked, you see me severely wounded, but not depressed. I'm sure that my Heavenly Father designs this affliction for my good. I'm perfectly satisfied that either in this life or in that which is to come, I shall discover that what is now regarded as a calamity, as a blessing. If it were in my power to replace my arm, I would not dare do it, unless I could know it was the will of my Father. Wow. I shall discover that this is now regarded as a calamity, is a blessing. When I read that, I realized there's elements that I have in my life, and I have had to learn to give God thanks for them. I just give Him thanks. I give Him thanks that I can't run. Amen. But I can walk fast. I've seen people that can't even walk. 
So I have to give God thanks. Yeah, you have to look at what you got. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. You know, I wonder what the other nine were thinking. How you get healed? You walk into what? The Samaritan came back, which tells me these other nine were not Samaritans. You know, the Jews looked at Samaritans like dogs. They had racial issues there. Were these nine Jews or, or, they, or they were a mixed bunch? Or how, who were they? But this Samaritan, he comes back and he gives, and he falls down at his, on his knees at his face. What were the other nine thinking as they went? What were they thinking? I, I ain't, I'm not smoozing with Jesus. Uh, I, I, I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll give him thanks later. I, I will probably, uh, you know, I was probably going to get better anyway. I was probably going to get healed anyway. Amen. It, it's just a coincidence that this happened this way. I, I think I'll wait till I know for sure. I think I'll see if science tells me if there was a real answer here for my healing. Mm. You know, he healed my leprosy. Why didn't he heal my bad leg too? Yeah. You ever got healed of something and wonder why you didn't get all of it? Because you didn't ask for all of it? Huh? It's just, I, I, I'm that way. I've had God do things in my life. I say, Lord, why didn't you get to this? Well, you didn't ask me. Man, he's probably after my money. That's the only reason he healed me. That's the only reason he said I'd have mercy. What were the other nine thinking? One came back. Many times in life, I, I have to have, say, God, I do not know how nor why, but I trust you. And I'm going to thank you in everything. First Chronicles, I close with this, 1634. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord and give thanks unto the Lord, for he's good and his mercy endures forever. As a matter of fact, this became an anthem and a song among the Hebrews. I'm going to give thanks. I'm going to rejoice in him, for his mercy endures forever. Bow your head just for a moment. In the silence of your mind, would you begin to count your blessings? Would you begin to realize just how blessed you are? First off, let me tell you, you're an American. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. Could have been born in you in Texas. Come on, Jesus. You're in a place where God can bless you financially in this area. Thank you, Lord. You got friends and family here. Some of you from generation to generation. This has been a part of your life. You got people that every time your phone rings, you smile. They're your friends. They're your brothers and sisters. You see pictures on social media. And then you begin to smile and realize what a blessing. You've had people that have been in your life that have gone to be with Jesus now. But you look back and realize what a blessing they were. Somebody sent me a picture of Jimmy Roberts this week. Diamond Jim. Jim went in my life a long time. Amen. I never forget him. He was my blessing. Hallelujah. He's one of the few men I ever knew in life that every time we got together, he tried to kiss me on the lips. Jesus, help me. Love that man. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Could you, with a loud voice right now, give God praise? Could you open it? Could you give him? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank for my kids, my grandkids. Thank you for my dog. Thank you I don't have cats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. When you go out to